It's week two of the college basketball season, and the ninth-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks continue a homestand, welcoming in one of the best mid-major programs in the country, the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. They played last night, got a win against St. Bonaventure, looking to go back-to-back. With Manny Watkins, I'm Brett Dolan. Delighted to have you with us. Manny, in the first two games, no Nick Smith Jr. So both Ricky Council, the fourth, Trevin Brazil have stepped forward. Yeah, look at those numbers there. When you don't have a guy like Nick Smith Jr., who is one of your elite scorers, other guys have to step up, and these two guys have done just that. All right, for the Jackrabbits, this is a battle-tested team three games in, including a game last night. Matt Dentlinger has provided some big-time hoops. Yeah, Dentlinger, a guy who got that extra year of eligibility through COVID, is really taking advantage of it. You see the numbers there, 5.5 a game the previous year. This year, already 16.7. He's a man on a mission, and he's trying to take this um, Jackrabbit team back to the NCAA tournament. A sixth-year senior. Coming back from a team that won 30 games a year ago. The Hogs and the Jacks, the first ever meeting. Our officials, Jason Baker, Marquise Pettigrew, and Jerry Heater, and we're underway. Arkansas played last Friday against Fordham. They've been preparing for the Jackrabbits ever since. Walsh the miss, got the takeaway, and the first basketball of the game. So active. Against Fordham, he, 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 was, he was probably the most active Razorback doing all the things on the offensive and defensive end. Starting the game off today with that same energy. There's your starters for South Dakota State. Three returning starters from a team that won 30 games a year ago and lost to Providence in the first round of the NCAA tournament. This team shot the lights out last year. One of the best in the entire country. A little different unit this year, and many of the issues been turnovers. They had 25 last night despite winning against the Bonnies. Yeah, I mean, there's not going to be a bunch of games where you have 25 turnovers and the outcome is, is a W in your in your win column. But uh, I, I tell you this, you come to Bud Walton and you have 25 turnovers, you're not going to win the game, and it's not particularly going to be close. There's Ricky Council, the fourth. Mitchell goes to work. That was stuffed by William Kyle the third, the freshman. Athletic play by Kyle. Going up there and getting it, the freshman. Strong move by Dentlinger. He's going to shoot some free throws. Coach Musselman up, getting an explanation already. Let's go back to the previous basket. This was just the hustle play from Jordan Walsh. Yeah, just never giving up on the play. You know, the, you know everyone says that play's over when you get the rebound. Not so much. Stuck with it, got the steal, got the put back. Dentlinger, the first point for the Jacks. This was a team that made 25 out of 30 free throws a night ago. That's where they were able to salt the game away against the Bonnies. Again, that, that, the free throw line. If you, if you can get there and, and convert at that high of a clip, those are the type of stats that can, can cover up for 25 turnovers. Must wanted to see his team pass the ball 35, 40 more times. That won't help, though, a traveling violation by Jordan Walsh. And many for the Jackrabbits, what are the challenges of playing last night, chartering, getting here at 1230 in the morning, and then going back to back? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. You don't understand how, how taxing a college basketball game is on, on your body. Um, and you play a, a good St. Bonaventure team last night. You get in at midnight tonight. Uh, it, it's going to be tough. I mean, you know, you're doing treatment on the plane, on the bus all night. But, I mean, yeah, there's just nothing that, that can replicate how your body's going to feel. You just kind of have to fight through it. Just saw Eric Henderson, the fourth-year head coach. He began his prep on Arkansas last night. Now, of course, the assistants already scouting the Razorbacks. But Arkansas prides themselves on their prep as Walsh launches the three. They've been working for several days. Mitchell tried to put it back in. He was fouled. And South Dakota State is a, is a team that's going, to, that's going to scout hard. And you see right now, playing off Black, playing off Walsh, wanting them to take those threes. So Arkansas hasn't been the best three-point shooting team this year. They have not. In fact, that Fordham game inning, they just had two three-point baskets. But they did have 54 points in the paint. And we know this is a team that is going to want to get to the free throw line a lot. Kai Mitchell, another guy 
from the previous game that, that, that showed a lot of promise. Really active around the rim on both the offensive and defensive end. Missed both free throws there. Rebound down to Zeke Mayo, preseason first team all Summit League performer. Alex Arians, double team. Left hander get his path cut off. Taken away again by Council. Ricky Council, the spin and the tumble, <laughs> and he was pushed, so he didn't slip. Well, Arkansas just turned Fordham over all night. 30 turnovers back on Friday, and just a takeaway here by Council. That was easy. Yeah, just, just easy. South Dakota State cannot have turnovers like that. And for South Dakota State, you're wondering. <laughs> Council just fell right there. But yeah, I mean, Arkansas is, is, is a great half court defensive team. South Dakota State has to get shots on target. You know, a, a bad shot is better than a turnover. And they've had two quick ones early on in this game. Devo caught that pass. That's his shot from the elbow. Another guy who's picked up his scoring from, from you know, his freshman and sophomore year. What I love about Devo Davis's game is he's not scared. You know, he's going to attack you. He's going to take shots. And although scoring might not be his number one trait, he doesn't know that all the time. Rebound to Jordan Walsh. Black out of control, and that's an easy call with a traveling violation before the contact. This is a Jackrabbit team that just lived by making three-pointers a year ago. They're not as proficient this season. An Arkansas team that really has just lowered their three-point attempts because they're not terribly successful from beyond the arc. So both of these teams need to hold on to the basketball, score in the paint, make their free throws. Yeah, I mean, Arkansas with the makeup of their team this year is, is, is more post inside centric. They're really long athletic. So obviously those three-point numbers are going to go down. But yeah, the Jackrabbits, that's, what, that's their bread and butter for their program. But yeah, I mean, Shots aren't going in. You got to get some easy baskets, layups, free throws. Arians couldn't hit in the paint. Anthony Black pulls up from distance. That was way long. Rebound to Alex Arians. He's playing in his 127th game with the Jackrabbits. There's a triple from Zeke Mayo. Pretty looking shot by Mayo there. And that's what that's what the Jackrabbits are going to need to do. They're going to need to get out in transition. This Arkansas team is so strong in the half court. Get out in transition and get some open looks. Got to feel good for Mayo. Had two points, 13 <laughs> rebounds last night. But there's Davis, a couple of field goals for Devo. You know, when Nick Smith Jr. didn't play in that opening game against North Dakota State, you mentioned Devo elevated to scoring. The team was plus 20 when he was in the game on the floor. Just yep. lost to the bounds by Dentlager. And Kind of a slow beginning, Manny, but Devo Davis providing some offense for the Razorbacks. Devo da Davis doing what he does best, being active in that middle of the area, knocking down the mid-range jump shot, and right here, just textbook basketball, one dribble pull up, that's target practice. Arkansas with the one-point lead over South Dakota State here at Bud Walton Arena. Brett Dalton and Manny Watkins, this is the 500th men's basketball game inside this facility. The Hogs have only lost 91. You played here for several years, Manny, and you think about when this building opened, there was all kinds of success, and the last couple of years have maybe a similar feel. Yeah, I mean, 500 games in this arena, it, it, it's amazing. Uh, you know, I personally feel blessed to have been a part of it, but yeah, I mean, the feel that the program has around itself right now, it, you know, it's very similar to when Arkansas was in those Final Fours, in those national championship races year in and year out. Almost an 82% winning percentage inside Bud. Meanwhile, the Jackrabbits, they just quite frankly never lose at their building. They have a hard time getting people to come to Brookings, South Dakota. Arkansas needed to fill a game late, and uh, the Jackrabbits, there's Brazil in the game, and that was a foul first. Jackrabbits lost a game, part of a multi-event tournament in Savannah. They needed to play, and they said, hey, we'll come here even after playing in Sioux Falls last night. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that's the that's the downside of being such a prolific mid-major program. Is <laughs> scheduling gets tough. Like, yeah. <laughs> no one wants to come <laughs> no to your building. No one wants to come to your building. No one wants to play you because, I mean, it could very well end up in a loss. We're going to talk about some of the crazy upsets already in a week plus in college basketball. There's Ricky Council, the fourth, leading score in the first couple of games for the Razorbacks in his first points this evening. And you see right now Arkansas – Understand, I think they're foul under the basket. Arkansas understands that this South Dakota State team just played a game yesterday, so they're going to pick up and try to get into those legs of the Jackrabbits. And the one thing this Razorback team prides themselves under Coach Musselman is just being ultra aggressive. And there's some of that defense earning a turnover off Arians Razorback basketball. Manny, you were here for that game against Fordham. 30 turnovers the Hogs forced, the most since 2004. I mean, that is a suffocating defense. Yeah, I mean, 30, 30 turnovers. It was a uh, it was a sloppy game by the Fordham Rams. Um, but Arkansas, that's what their pressure will do. You know, sometimes when you when you're pressing up on some on players, it, it doesn't always have to be a steal. It could be a careless turnover, and Fordham shot themselves in the foot a lot that game. Brazil the follow and the slam for TB2. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again, and Brazil puts one home. The length of the Arkansas Razorbacks. When you have such size and such athleticism, you don't always have to shoot the three that well. Brazil showing it off right there with Can't that Can't make from distance, just follow. There's a hit from Arians. Jack Rabbits needed that just to finish the thought on the defense against Fordham. The Rams went more than eight minutes without even scoring in that game. Yeah, yeah, it's Arkansas. In the Eric Musselman era, they've always been sh very strong on the defensive end. That was a great save off the floor by Luke Apple. Played his first game of the season last night, went about 13 minutes. Apple, pretty good offensive player on the drive. The left-hander threw one hard up the window, really couldn't gather, disrupted by Mitchell. There's the alley, the catch, and an easy lay-in for Trevin Brazil. Arians just looked like, what do you want me to do there? <laughs> and a finger poke. Ricky Council raised Matt Mims. That's the third team foul on the Razorbacks. Great just pass too easy, by right? Council right there, yeah. Way too easy. Someone like Brazil, he's 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 tall, athletic, but you got to utilize your size against him. Get low, push him out of the paint. Tanner to Slav pulling the trigger for the Jackrabbits. Moore spinning. Lays one off the window, couldn't get it to drop. Former Wisconsin Badger just about had one down. Feels like the Jacks have had a few of those shots. Here's Jalen Graham into the game. Tries to follow his miss. He's going to go to the line. Jalen Graham was a guy who did not play in that first game. Yeah. Had 11 minutes against Fordham, but where we saw him excel was the red-white game where he put on a tremendous show. Yeah, I mean, a guy who, who played well in the inner squad game, didn't get a chance in the first game, but then when his number was called against the Fordham Rams, really showed out, and you're seeing, you know, he's, he's, he's getting the benefit of playing well. And just for, for, for the kids out there, whenever your number is called, you got to be ready. Jalen Graham did just that. There's Eric Henderson, fourth year, South Dakota State. What a fun guy just to talk with. Not just basketball, but great personality, so much success. He's lost one game in three-plus years <laughs> in his home arena. That's why they're here tonight. Unbelievable. Manny, they've missed two or three of yeah. those shots on the drive to the basket. Yeah, they've had, they've had some good looks. Just can't seem to put them down. Graham with a height advantage, working against Apple. There's the spin. Did he walk? Yes. Traveling violation on Jalen Graham. I think he disagrees. Uh, Arkansas will need to adjust. That's that's about three calls for a travel. These refs are looking for that pivot foot to move. You're gonna need to plant your feet, stay solid, and go up strong. Jack Rabbits two of seven from the field. Arkansas extending that defense. 
Moores, tough shot over Brazil on the hit from Matthew Moores, the South Dakota native, former Wisconsin Badger. It's a tough shot. By the way, he had six years of varsity basketball in South Dakota. <laughs> have have eighth you heard grader. of something like that? Eighth grader on varsity. <laughs> Love it. Three-time Gatorade Player of the Year. There's Graham again. That's the shot we saw in that red-white game where he had 25 points, just that Throw down hook shot. That hook shot. And, and what I love about Graham's game is he's got such good footwork that he can get to his spots. Moore's got the step. Anthony Black picked his pockets. Numbers aren't there. Council darting through defenders and scoring off the window. Way too many turnovers for South Dakota State right now. Way too many turnovers. And, you know, part of it could be fatigue from a quick turnaround, but. Yeah, seven turnovers a night after 25, and yeah. for such a disciplined team, I know that's an area that's really of concern. It's taking possessions away. Jalen Graham thought he had good defense. Foul on Graham, will step aside, and many Ricky Council, the fourth, showing off his athleticism again. So strong, so poised. Ricky Council can score at all different levels. Arkansas with the early lead. Well, the Jackrabbits have been battle tested already. How about two games in, some buzzer beaters on the road at Akron. It looks like the Zips are going to win the game, but no, a missed layup. Oh, man. So they go to overtime. And watch this, just a couple of seconds on the clock. Akron got the rebound. There was a whistle. So, of course, they're going to make a pair of free throws. And that's how South Dakota State lost. 81-80, actually, by just a single point going on the road. Then they go to Boise, seconds remaining. This is Dentlinger able to gather and score. And the Jackrabbits had a big road win. They traveled almost 4,400 miles, Manny, for those two games. So they played last night. This is their fourth game. They got to feel like they're in mid-season form already. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what a lot of mid-major teams do is they put themselves through the ringer. Put themselves through the ringer early on, so when you get to that conference play, it's you know transparently just not as taxing as going to a Bud Walton Arena, playing two games back to back. But I mean, yeah, they you know they got to be feeling some of that fatigue. Long shot from to Slaw. They're going to do this later on in the year. They have back to back games with the second being at Alabama. So another challenge ahead of South Dakota State. Meanwhile, seven point lead for the Hawks. Council. Carried that basketball, a little stutter step, and Arkansas has also had some unforced turnovers. Yeah, Arkansas has got hit with a few travels, a carry right there. So that's going to say just has to try to capitalize, not turn the ball over themselves. They've been able to get to the basket. They haven't been able to score, and yeah. Arkansas and Devo Davis ticketed with the foul. If I'm South Dakota State, I'm a team that shoots free throws at a high clip. I am. Just dribble penetration all day for me. I'm trying to get to that free throw line because I know there's a high percentage chance that it's two points every time I get fouled. That, that's what they have to do. They have to attack. Arkansas is pressing up, which means you'll have driving lanes. Got to attack the basket. Previous foul was charged to Brazil with that left hand rather than Debo. Arians, though, the sixth-year senior, more than 1,000 points in his career. Seven last night against St. Bonaventure. Shooting with that wrap on his left wrist splits a pair. A lot of guys in the South Dakota State team, older. They're not going to get flustered when Arkansas goes on one of those Bud Walton runs. Stick with it. And Graham didn't travel, spins baseline. Ricky Council the fourth. That one almost brought rain. Rebound to Arians. Dentlinger. That's a tough shot and a hit from the corner from Tesla. Just had an air ball, but he buries the triple. You lo gotta love it when someone can respond after, after an air ball. Tesla shot one way over the rim, and then the next time just shot it like nothing happened. Cold blooded. Council on the pull-up. Tipped out by Black. That's what his size allows him to do from that guard position. 
so active. Jalen Graham getting some extra minutes, but had his pocket pick. Steal by Teslaw. He's going to go from one end to the other. Did he walk? No whistle. Arian spots up on a three wide left. And here's Brazil on the open floor. Decided to pull it out. Brazil, that's within his range. Tremendous athleticism, and maybe he might be one of the better three-point shooters on this team. Yeah, he definitely might be. Um, Smooth-looking stroke, too, and he's a guy that when, when he shoots it, it looks like it's going in. Jackrabbits can't answer. Rebound to Graham. Arkansas at even 50% shooting percentage. Council. Ricky Council, Ricky Council the four. Seven points, and Arkansas builds their lead up to nine. Largest lead of the game. Let's see how South Dakota State responds here. Air ball grabbed by Council. Not the shot you want there. I mean, you had to think at some point that Arkansas was going to be able to find their shooting shot right there. Just a good looking shot by Brazil. Caught it in rhythm. Knocked it down. But, I mean, shot it poorly their, their, their first two games. At some point, some of those shots are going to have to start falling. I think we saw that at the end of the European trip where he had some posterizing dunks, and all of a sudden he just stepped out as if to say, by the way, I could shoot a few threes as well. You Here it. you go. There's another one. Council tried to get his hands on it, rebound out of Mayo. Remember, he had 13 rebounds last night, just two points. Preseason first team all Summit League performer, Dentlinger, giving up some inches. Brazil, his length disrupted that sequence. Council, his speed, and the flush. Ricky Council, the fourth, with nine points to lead all scores. So athletic. That was in a blink of an eye. Blink of an eye can just lift off the ground. Jacks needed an answer, and they get one. Nice pass there by Arians. Broden Lean with the hoop. Going to be a foul on Kamani Johnson. He's not played many minutes. He had the uh, illegal screen, and many we've seen some athleticism again tonight from the Razorbacks. Oh, Ricky Council, man, guy who can do it all. See right here, jump stop, elevate up. I tell you, a lot of people can't do that. Arkansas Razorbacks with the early lead. Eric Henderson has a tremendous shooting team. At least he did a year ago. They were 142nd in the country, Manny, in attempts, but they were number one in shooting percentage. How does any team shoot 44.5%? Coach Henderson said they're stubborn. They know what a good shot is, and they're not going to attempt wild three-pointers. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. That is efficiency, but that's also we're not taking a shot unless it's a good shot, a good or a great shot. And, and I mean, you can see those numbers. Those are still wild numbers, but when you take good shots, the percentages go up. Arkansas shot 30.5% from distance. Lean on the drive. That was a pretty basket. That's Charlie Easley, his first. He was one player that uh, Coach Anderson said, great defensive guy, his offensive game is coming. He's going to be a key component for that team going into conference play. Nifty drive and a finish from Anthony Black. Got the step on the baseline. Anthony Black, a guy that I think is well beyond his years in terms of skill level. He's so strong on both ends of the floor. That was a good look for Easley. Feet set, but he didn't knock it down. Arkansas's largest lead has been 11. Okay. And this is dangerous when he can get this step. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to do anything with that. You know, 6'7", 6'6", 6'7". When he, when he gets that step on you and he's – Super sneaky athlete as well. He's just going to elevate over you and finish it. Different frame for a guard at 6'7". It comes with some 
strengths and weaknesses, but certainly he feels like he can look over the defense at times. That's a tough shot by Makai Mitchell. Mitchell. Rhode Island transfer. Jackrabbits really could use a few hoops to calm down this crowd. Mayo, he got the step. No, sir, says Council. Shot clock didn't reset, so it's in single digits. Mayo again by Black. A little bit of a slip and a whistle. Wasn't sure if he was going to jackknife or whether he was trying to avoid maybe another shot swatted into the stand. Yeah, and that's what you have to do as a guard if you're Mims. And, and, and that, was, that was a smart move by him. He got the step on Black. And instead of just trying to go up and, and have a, you know, a, a, a superior, taller athlete come block your shot from behind, you cut him off in front of you, and the only way they can, they can even come close to the ball is going through your body, and it's going to be a foul. That's how you have to do it. If you're playing against Arkansas, you've got to win the step on the first drive and then cut him off, get him in front of him, and then have to go through your body to, to try to block the shot, and it's going to be a foul nine out of ten times. So Mims, the junior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And seven a night ago against St. Bonaventure. Trying to convert them both, he will. And not just did this team shoot well from distance, they were over 80% from the free throw line. I asked Coach Henderson today if he recruits good shooters or he develops them. And, you know, I, I think that's one of those things you can get better at as a shooter, but it comes pretty naturally early for the good ones. Yeah, it, it, it's, there, there's a baseline there. You can. You can get you can get slightly better, uh, and you can work on it. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you there. There's a there's a there's something when you're born that that flick of the wrist just is a little bit smoother than others. You know, I come from the heartland. You could see these kids in the hayloft in the barn. They're shooting all winter when it's 20 degrees outside and getting the shots up all year round in South Dakota, or Iowa, or Minnesota. <laughs> Mims, a couple of number ones going at it. Bit of a wild hoist, it just about dropped. That's another shot, albeit contested, that South Dakota State's had inside that arc. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the stat that won't, won't come up on the stat sheet for Arkansas, but they're going to have so many of those this year where they make you take a tough shot that's, that's really low percentage, and you're probably not going to make it. You're really just throwing it up there to just get it at the rim to not get blocked. But a lot of times those are often better than blocks because you're getting a rebound and, and you're out in transition. Manny, this offense goes through some stretches where it almost feels like everybody's waiting for someone to step forward and maybe go on a little bit of a mini run. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens when you when you don't have someone like a Nick Smith Jr. who, who is that guy who is the go-to guy, the guy who can go get you a bucket at any point. Sometimes you're looking to, to your teammate to, to go score. In Arkansas, that's good that they can try to find that. I think Ricky Council is a guy that can be that, that scorer when a Nick Smith Jr. is not playing. Devo Davis, airballed one. Apple had the previous basket for the Jackrabbits. Another takeaway, steal by Devo. Yeah, I mean, you have numbers right there if you're South Dakota State. you got to convert on something like that. that. Hurts. Can't, can't end in a turnover. Devo just airballed one, so we'll shoot this one. It's pure. The knockdown, that's the first three-point basket of the season for Devo Davis. Yep, you see, that's a, that's a five-point swing right there. There's the spin from Apple. Tough move. They missed him in the first couple of games. This was a guy last year against ORU, a good team. He had 41 points in a game. I mean, if you can score 40 in, in any level, that's buckets. So he's capable of scoring any time he touches the ball, and he's really aggressive. You can see when he catches it, he's, he's trying to go get a basket. Trying to build up his strength, but he wanted to play in back-to-back -back games. That's a good step after missing the first two. Trevin Brazil going to work. Apple leaning in against Jalen Graham. No whistle. Gets back the miss. This is a young man they really want to get going. Tremendous upside for William Kyle the third out of the Omaha area. Yeah, he's athletic. See right there, just another vertical dunk. Manny, it feels like Arkansas has really outplayed South Dakota State, but because they haven't had that, that run offensively, the separation, it's only a six-point game. Yeah, it's only a six-point game, and if you're South Dakota State, you got to be happy with that because 
you've not played your best game. You've had turnovers, haven't really made a bunch of threes. Good pass to Kyle and the flush. Eric Musselman called him an excellent, excellent freshman. Starting to heat it up. We've got a timeout. It's a four-point game. Coach Musselman is not happy. We'll step aside. Jackrabbits have cut the Razorbacks' advantage down to four here at Bud Walton. Razorback fans, it is time for your pluses mixtape brought to you by... Anthony Black is a thoughtful young man. And Manny, he knows what Coach Musselman has done developing players, even recently, like Isaiah Joe and Moses Moody, who are true guards. And I think that's exciting for a young man who says, he can make me better. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's what that's what you want as a as a young player coming in with, with aspirations of going to the NBA. You, you, you want a coach that can develop you. Walsh right there, knocking down the shot. But yeah, you want a coach that can develop you. Um, and, and you know that was probably a huge reason why Anthony Black ended up coming in and joining the Razorback family. Hey, the Trevin Brazil, open floor, TB2 with the slam. That was trouble when he's turned loose after the three from Walsh, the takeaway and the flush from Brazil. Just like that, Arkansas pops a timeout, gets a 5-0 run. It's not the way the Jackrabbits had drawn it up. They need to hit from Dentlinger. Spins out. There's Kyle again. But Walsh knocked it away, and Devo takes it. Walsh, can he go back to back with triples? He cannot. Rebound to Arians. Dentlinger hasn't had the best half. Turned the ball over a few times. That's another takeaway. Walsh just grabbed the basketball. Hawks playing a little bit faster with their pace. Yeah, I mean, this is the pace that favors them. Ricky Council, the fourth, banks one in. He's in double figures with the 11 points. He has become a scorer this year for the Hawks. Mayo had that one swatted from behind by Walsh. There's his length and his versatility. Yeah, I mean, he's just being so active right now. In South Dakota State had a game that was close and then just kind of folded here in these last few seconds. Arkansas equaling its largest lead. Mitchell the catch. And he gets the basket and a chance for one more. I was blocked by our official. I was wondering if that was going to be an and one opportunity. There was a quick collision on the catch and the basket. See right there. Well, that's close. It's close. I mean, mo mo most, most refs give, give the charge there. You know, it's, it's, it's refreshing to see when someone falls, it's not always a charge. Just a 10-0 run now by the Razorbacks over the last minute and a half yeah, as we get closer to the break. You can't have that if you're South Dakota State. 11 turnovers by the Jackrabbits. Mayo, that's a good step, a drive, and a basket. That'll bring us to the end of the first half, but the Razorbacks have a 12-point cushion. Yeah, and Arkansas, way to end the half. You get a timeout by Coach Musselman. He gets into him. You got Jordan Walsh right there, just so athletic to knock the three-point shot down. And then you got Trayvon Brazil finishing with some authority. Arkansas with a 12-point lead going into the half. It's a 12-point lead at the half for the Razorbacks over the Jackrabbits from South Dakota State. Welcome you back. Courtside, Brett Dolan with Matty Watkins. Thanks for joining us tonight again. The Jackrabbits played last night, traveled here. It felt like maybe they had some opportunities on some drives to the basket, but weren't able to take full advantage. Yeah, I mean, you can see the fatigue in the first half coming in. Point blank shots they got to make. They have to convert on those. And shot over the basket right here. Just weren't able to convert. But as the game went on, finally got to the basket, finally got something to drop. Got to get those legs going. 
Got an easy dunk there. Uh, but, you know, they're definitely going to want to keep some of that going into the second half. It's a team that is going to compete. We know that. Arkansas really got a little bit of everything, but Ricky Council, again, providing scoring. Yeah, Council's just so good. He can shoot the three, hit the mid-range, jump shot. See right here Anthony Black using his size to get to the basket. Arkansas, you know, utilized that, that fatigue against South Dakota State and really just attacked the basket right there Mitchell with the and one. Uh, Arkansas is going to want to try to continue to do that. Here's your stats. Arkansas gets to the free throw line, makes just one. South Dakota State would like a few more, but the Razorbacks man is shooting 55% from the field. Yeah, I mean, they're shooting a ton of layups and, and getting easy baskets. That's You'll see those percentages do that. South Dakota State's got to pack in that defense and force Arkansas to make some three-point shots. Seven different Razorbacks scored. Meanwhile, for the Jackrabbits, I believe they had 10 different players scoring in that first half. Obviously, the first four or five minutes always important when a team's trailing, but the end of the first half seemed like it got away from South Dakota State. I, I think that magnifies the importance of these first four minutes. Yeah, it does. It does. You know, you had a, had a single-digit deficit to overcome, and then you come out of a timeout and let Arkansas go in a 10-0 run. Just can't happen. Uh, th these first four minutes are going to be crucial for the Jackrabbits. Mayo had his path cut off. Dentlinger. Kind of leaning in to create some space. Bit of a late whistle. Yeah, Dentlinger's going to have to get involved. He didn't score a basket in the first half. Um, only made two free throws. He's got to get more aggressive. He's a leading scorer. That is a foul, though, upon further review. That left yeah. hand it reaching goes down. down. Yep. Just too easy for the officials. Three straight double-figure scoring performances by Dentlinger. Three points here this evening. Mitchell calling for that basketball. Jordan Walsh. And one. He's just, he's, he's just so athletic. You know, he, he's the guy that, in my opinion, has the highest motor um, on, on this Arkansas team and most of the time the highest motor on the court against, you know, whoever they're playing against. But he's just so athletic, knows how to use his body. Love Drew Walsh's game. Still just one point from the line this evening for the Razorbacks. It's almost like Arkansas just hasn't been able to put the complete game together and not saying that you 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 want that this early in the season. We're, we're still in November, but like whether it be, you know, they, they cause turnovers, but they don't hit threes. You know, they, they've hit a few threes this game and now the free throws aren't going in. Like it's just like trying to get that complete game has been super elusive so far. No, I would agree. I think that's why these three games at home leading into Maui so important, just to get a little bit of a feel before the competition ratchets up even further. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's what these games are for, kind of get your footing. And, and then, yeah, when you get into the Maui tournament, you're playing some of the best competition in the country. Although Louisville, we'll talk more about them. My goodness, have they struggled out of the gates. Yeah, I mean, I don't... Devo, that's from NBA range. Ten points tonight for Davis and a couple of three-point baskets. I'll tell you, if his three-point shot uh, you know, gets gets consistent, he's he's going to be really dangerous moving forward. Not that he already is. I mean, he, he already is, but it's just a different just dimension. It's a different dimension to the game that opens up his drive, opens up his mid-range shot. It just He starts knocking those down. It gets real scary. Easily on the miss. Danger time right now for South Dakota State. Black almost got that step against Arians. Well, why not spot up another one? Not he this wanted time. that one. <laughs> I think William Kyle III had his arms wrapped around. Let's go back and watch this 
pure wow. three point. That's from Jonesboro yeah, there on the map. NBA right there. <laughs> Let everybody know. It was an area last year where Devo struggled. Man, he was a 27% three point shooter last season. Yeah, I mean, and it just shows that he, he got in the gym in the summer, worked on it. And you know, he's not afraid to take those shots, and he's going to continue to do that. And even even not making them, as long as you'll take them, it opens up your game. Hey, the threes are falling tonight. Jordan Walsh knocks down another. That's six for the Razorbacks, and the lead is ballooned to 19. Yeah. Arkansas is. Technical foul as well. I thought there was a flop, and it was Charlie Easley who fell down on that previous play. The officials let play continue because Arkansas had possession. Then they stop it, put the technical foul on Easley. And then Ricky Council gets a free throw, so that is a four-point sequence. Flopping. I thought he just reacted as if he was knocked into the stands, and there may have been contact, but not that much contact. There are no more warnings for flopping. Officials will put a T on that. That's a backcourt 10 second violation earned by Anthony Black. Yeah, South Dakota State is just. There's unraveling. the flop right there. Or what they called a flop for a technical foul. I mean, there was contact. There was contact. I, I don't know if I'm calling the technical there. Just maybe a no call. But yeah, again, South Dakota State in, in dangerous territory right here. You know, this has already bloomed up to 20. Yeah, the timing could not have been worse. Yeah. And then a backcourt violation. Arkansas 6 of 13 from distance, but that's a pretty move by Mitchell. No finish. Rebound down to Arias. Easily, maybe sensing contact, unable to drop it in. Ricky Council, the fourth, another highlight reel slam. And a timeout, South Dakota State. Ricky Council, wouldn't it be nice just once to have the hops, the ups that he possesses? Wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't it be something? If once a game, he's going to do something like that. Ricky Council bringing the house down with the reverse jam. Arkansas with a big 22-point lead. Hey, that's Todd Lee, in addition to having the best hair in the building, a former head coach at South Dakota. So he went head-to-head -head with these Jackrabbits. And Manny, in addition to being the director of scouting, I would imagine he has a tremendous scouting report on South Dakota State going head-to-head -head with them two times a season. Oh, yeah, he does. He does. And that's, that's an unfair advantage. You don't get to... You don't see that very often when you got two teams matching up, especially a team South Dakota State and Arkansas. Couldn't be two polar opposites, but uh, yeah, I mean, you got that South Dakota connection. Of course, Coach Lee, pretty good friends with Eric Kenderson, but Todd Lee also developed Stanley Amude. Remember him, former Razorback, and his parents used to live in Bentonville, so he's no stranger to Northwest Arkansas, but here in a working capacity. Speaking of working, Arkansas has gone to work in 11-0 run. This is a prideful, good team, but the Jackrabbits need something to go right. Another near turnover. Mayo had to catch that one and then got the bounce. It'll drop through. Seven for Zeke Mayo. Yeah, I mean, you you, you end the first half with a 10-0 run for Arkansas, and then you start the second half with an 11-0 run. you got to be happy there. It's just this Arkansas team. They've had those spurts where they can reel off 12, 13 in a row without the other team scoring. It's basketball is a game of runs, and Arkansas has shown you that they can have some of the best runs in the country. There's a miss from Matthew Moores. Jordan Walsh looks like he's limping. Yeah, he's hobbled over there in the corner. Not sure if he's cramped up. Maybe he rolled an ankle of some sort. Devo a little bit short on that shot. Back tap to Davis.
I'd like to see Anthony Black get more involved on the offensive end. I feel like you know he's being a little passive, but someone of that talent level. Boy, Walsh is hobbled over, and yeah, finally the officials are going to just whistle a timeout to give him a break. See if he's okay. We'll step aside and come back. Razorbacks enjoying a 20-point lead over South Dakota State. Benny, this is not a good sign. Still not sure what happened to Jordan Walsh, but he looks like he's in quite a bit of pain as he was helped to the locker room. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have to go back to the locker room, it's it's not it's not good. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious. But I mean, yeah, he was he was howling for a good 45 seconds over there before they stopped play. He had a double-figure scoring game against Fordham with 12. He's put up 10 points tonight, including a couple of triples. This was a tight game with about two and a half minutes to go before intermission. Arkansas led by four. Manny, since then they've gone on a 21 to five run. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what you have to do if you want to be a, a, a team that makes noise and march like this Arkansas team has the past few years. And on the other side, South Dakota State, when, when teams go on runs, you gotta find a way to stop the bleeding. They've been unable to do that tonight, but you got to get to the basket, got to get to the foul line, stop the clock, cause a turnover, do something. But, you know, kudos to Arkansas. They've had a strong offensive game. Black didn't get that rebound. He poked it loose, but collected by the Jackrabbits. Matt Mims can't hit. Floor rebound to Davis. Brazil running the floor again. He tried to spin and posterize, but Mayo took it back. These are the type of shots that the Jackrabbits need to hit, but Mims can't knock it in. Yeah, Coach I mean, Henderson really wanted a foul there on Arkansas, but uh, not going to be the case. I think that's just part of that, that fatigue right there. Let's see, yeah, it's just a box what, out. Those arms were locked, and they that's one locked. thing the officials don't want from either player to be tied up. I mean, yeah, the, the South Dakota State, I think those, those legs are, are, are catching up with them, and they just, the shots are short. They're grabbing a legal screen by, right there by Arkansas. I mean, if you want to know why they played last night and chartered here, again, they want to play, and they want games. Arkansas needed a game, but what they have done, Home record since 2011. They have the best home record of anybody in the country. Seven losses. No one wants to go to Brookings. Yeah, I mean, I. <laughs> it would be irresponsible for your program to book a game <laughs> might be. in South Dakota State <laughs> and their home floor. <laughs> the numbers will tell you that. Better than Gonzaga. Better than Kansas. <laughs> Belmont, Kentucky, Duke, Arizona. Doesn't matter. Unbelievable. A team last year that went 14 and 0 at home, 18 and 0 in the Summit League and played Providence in Buffalo. Eric Musselman's team was also in scenic Buffalo for the first couple of games. What Arkansas has done, though, is avoid upsets. They've never lost in November under Eric Musselman. A couple of more games to go in Hawaii. That's yeah. Mikel Mitchell. And I think, I mean, not a lot of uh, or not enough praise is given to, to the fact that you, you don't drop one in November and you haven't under, under Eric Musselman. You know, people think, oh, well, you're playing mid-major schools, you're supposed to win. Well, in theory, yes, but we see it every single day. Every night. Every night a team is losing, and, you, you know, you're virtually 100% in Bud Walton Arena or just in November against some of that competition, you're taking care of what you need to take care of. And I think that is a huge reason why we get to march and, and these Arkansas team, uh, these teams are, are are in the mix is because they know how to take care of business. They know how to do That's what right. they need to do to, 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 to win the games that they need to win. Um, and it starts in November. Take care of business, keep winning games, get better, be ready to go in conference play. Ricky Council was getting ready for some excitement. But, you know, Louisville, Manny, they've lost three one-point games. They lost to Bellarmine, Wright State. They lost to App State. Grambling State beat Colorado in Louisiana. Florida State's lost two games to Stetson and UCF. Oklahoma lost to Sam Houston. Temple lost to Wagner. And TCU 
lost at home to Northwestern State, who was ranked 352nd in the Ken Palm, while TCU was 15th. Yeah, I mean, TCU is a, is a team that a lot, of, a lot of people were saying, you know, on a good day, they could knock off Kansas and, and be the Big 12 champs this year. And, and, and you see that team lose. Um, you see the SWAC. The SWAC is, is is undefeated against the Pac-12. Like, they're doing some damage. They're doing some damage. <laughs> like we, there are a lot of losses by these by these big schools, these high major schools at home in November. And again, the fact that Arkansas hasn't had that happen once is is that's that's no easy feat. That's a physical play from Luke Apple. Marshalltown, Iowa native, seven points for Apple. Who again just. Got into a game for the first time this season last night. Yeah, man, I, I love his aggression. He he he's is trying to score. When he gets the ball, he's in scoring position. Council. Maybe a bit of a heat check. 16 for Ricky, but airball the three. Apple, there's the spin. Switch to the right hand. That's a pretty move and a finish. That was a. Uh, Apple grabbed Council's leg on that one. Got away with one there. Council to the basket. That was a little bit of pent-up anger. He was going to get to the rim and score. Yeah, you, don't 18. Want to, you don't want to do that to Ricky Council. By the way, we're going to get to the bottom of Ricky Council's name here coming up soon. We're going to let him do it. So uh, stay tuned for that. It's William Kyle the third. Went with the hook a little bit short. And Brazil gathers in the rebound. That's seven rebounds for Brazil. And he'll get whistled for the traveling. Timeout. Many of these teams are determined to get to the basket. Yeah, Apple right there, nice spin move. Get to the basket, and then Ricky Council using that athleticism. Arkansas with the big lead over. So they call him four. Now, if you go back and you look at the roster from Wichita State, his uniform was four. He can't get it here. Devo's already <laughs> taken that number. Otherwise, four would be four. <laughs> I said, if you name your son Ricky, it's going to be confusing. He said, I got a lot of time to think about it. And I said, good. <laughs> there he is again. Well, he is a lightning bolt going so fast there, though he loses the ball out of bounds. There's a focus, though, about Ricky Counts. Yeah, I mean, his demeanor is, is serious. Yeah, very serious. And, you know, he, he, can, he can have some fire to him yeah, after, after a big play, big run. But he's focused. He's focused on the task at hand. And, you know, he doesn't waver whether things are going well or not. William Kyle just stuffed by Brazil. Hogs don't have numbers. Council, there's the spin. Almost tried to volleyball that up to the window, but he drew the foul. Trevin Brazil on the other end, man, he said, uh, not in my house. Yeah, just use, using that lane. I, I, don't, I don't know what you do there. <laughs> that was my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know what you do there. That's, that's seven feet tall with another seven foot of arms. I, that's, that's not fair. More than likely, Council is going to lead this team in scoring again tonight. That would be the third straight game. And I know Arkansas excited and maybe anxious to see when Nick Smith Jr. might be able to get back. It seems like he's moving better pregame and such. Obviously, you don't want to come back if you're not 100%. But uh, Council has done quite a job providing some scoring. Nims just about threw that to that fan that went uh, yeah. sitting in the fourth <laughs> row, amazed by that Brazil. Rejection. Entry to Mitchell. Makai Mitchell tried the crossover. That's a dangerous move for a big guy. Trying to cross over and throw yeah, to somebody's that's, face. That's a tough one. Want to face up and maybe do a jab and, and, and keep that ball in one hand. Mitchell, one of the Rhode Island transfers. It's a competition for minutes right now. I mean, Musk doesn't go terribly deep in his rotation, but sometimes the rotations change. 
even last year, Manny, this team lost their first three SEC games. They were 0-3 before they found a way to get it together and get to an Elite Eight. Yeah, I mean, you, you go 0-3, and then, yeah, you find yourself in the Elite Eight. But to your point, I mean, college basketball, it, it is always it, it, it's always an audition. I mean, I even from my experience, I feel like I was – was auditioning during the last game of the season <laughs> in the practice before that game on, on trying to practice well enough so I, you could trust me in the games. But, you know, for, for Musselman, who is, his, his rotation is a lot smaller, I mean, th these are crucial minutes. These are crucial minutes, and you got to show, like, hey, you can trust me at any point of the game. And, and if you earn that trust with Coach Musselman, I mean, you're going to see yourself out there on the floor and you're going to be allowed to make mistakes. And Kamani Johnson right there, and there's a good example, man. He had nine minutes against North Dakota State, three against Fordham. So he's a veteran, but still trying to earn more minutes, more playing time. Yeah, I mean, he's he's one of those guys that he's got to make the most of what he what he's getting, because like you said, that rotation will get cut down even more as we get into conference play. Once Nick Smith gets back, there's a three from Anthony Black. If you're going to have a guy who's projected to be one of the top four or five picks in the NBA, he's going to play. That might mean less playing time for everybody else. <laughs> I think the I bright assume. side tonight is Arkansas's three-point shooting. I mean, that had to be a concern, even just two against Fordham the other night. And I know Arkansas had all kinds of points in the paint and turned over Fordham all night, but uh, they've knocked down seven triples. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 you kind of could, could think that at some point some of those shots were going to fall down. I mean, look at these Arkansas players. Like, they all have, have good shooting forms. It looks good. Just weren't falling. Um, I'm sure it's an emphasis in practice, and yeah, at some point something's got to give, and they're knocking them down tonight. I would say a practice and shoot around every drill, every shooting drill is a competition. One team against another, counting, trying to outlast the other. So it isn't just go to the gym and throw a few up. Everything is done with intent and repetition and workload. Brazil on the drive, hit the side of the window, and he is a low to try and keep in front playing defense against Trevin Brazil. Here. His, his speed with the ball for being that, that size is, is really impressive. I mean, he can knock down the three, obviously, but. And he's coming off the bench. Yeah, he's coming off the bench. He's got that quick, quick first step that, you know, a lot of guys his size can't stay in front of him. He's the fourth racer back at double figures and chasing a double-double. A couple of rebounds shy of a double-double. And there's Darian Ford in as Council checks out. 11 tonight for Brazil. He had that 21-point game in the season opener against North Dakota State. Arkansas trying to take care of business against the Dakota teams here in this <laughs> three-game homestand. Active hands. Kamani got it. Devo Davis, easy lay-in. Defense turning into offense. And that's the epitome of what this Razorback team can do in that last sequence. Yeah, I mean, if they, they, you don't want this team to get out in transition because it could be a highlight show. Morris could not convert at the rim, and it'll stay, I believe, Jack Rabbit's basketball. It's just active hands and disruption as we take a look again. Yeah, again, so good in the half-court defense. Anthony Black, one of the best defenders. And you see right there, just getting out in transition and doing what Arkansas does best using that speed and athleticism to go get easy baskets. Brazil was ready for the alley-oop. Did you see that one? <laughs> um, Mayo was not letting that happen. He led to use Devo Davis. You can have that layup. You're not, you're not getting this alley-oop. Hook shot won't drop from Moores. Remember, with a couple of minutes to go in the half, it was a four-point game. So Arkansas continues to extend the advantage, shooting better than 54% from the field, seven three-pointers. Yeah, and I think, I think the fatigue has just been a little too much. Arkansas has turned it over too much themselves. That's 16, and Coach Musselman always a stickler for attention to detail. But timeout will return to Bud Walton Arena. Arkansas getting some separation over the Jacks. Well, at halftime, the new chancellor stopped by, and now <laughs> it's just gotten a little bit goofy. We've got a, a headset here, I, I think, Manny. Oh, uh, yeah. A, a I, don't, is that, I don't know the ears. Yeah, the, the headset has no chance to get over this thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Suey. <laughs> I love it. Ah. I love it. 
I tell you what, getting a little goofy here courtside. <laughs> Inside, eight minutes to play on the 500th men's basketball game at Bud Walton Arena. Hogs have lost just 91 games inside this facility. That's 81%. Good chance you're winning when you're a Razorback and you're playing in Bud Walton Arena. Darian Ford getting some minutes. Brazil needs one more rebound for a double-double. Take it away. It'll stay Jack Rabbit's basketball. This night will not finish the way they certainly would like. But as Coach Henderson said today, you know, we do this for a purpose. I mean, I know this is a game where you can get a check as well. But they're designing this team. They're toughening them up for the Summit League where they were 18-0 last year. They were a 12 seed in the NCAA tournament. This is with a this is a purpose. Something will come out of this game. Yeah, something will come out of it. And a team that was 18 and 0 last year, and a lot of you know people picked South Dakota State to beat Providence in that in that 12-5 match. That was one of them. Yeah, and myself as well. They didn't necessarily help my bracket out, but this <laughs> there's there, there's a purpose behind this. There's a purpose behind playing that St. Bonaventure, then coming down here to play Arkansas, um, and, and it only makes your team better when you get into that conference play, and then on into March. Devo on the drive, tip won't go. I was in Brookings for the WNIT championship on CBS. I mean, they had a sellout crowd. It was absolutely incredible. The environment, Seton Hall came in, and you know, you got a—I got a sense of the passion. You think of South Dakota, how remote it is. It is a tremendous mid-major program. The fans support it. They played in the Pentagon last night in Sioux Falls. I think it'd be fun to go up there for a Summit League game. Maybe not in January. Yeah, maybe maybe <laughs> catch me in the, in, you know, right right around March time before you get into the conference tournament. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's basketball and basketball only. That pass was just easily intercepted by Mayo. Both teams will have some turnovers to look at on tape. That was a nifty scoop. Yeah, I mean, you see Coach Musselman over there. He's not not happy. You know, a game where you've got it, you've got it won, but it's not about just the the, the winning the game right now. It's about you know cutting down on those mistakes. You don't want to make them, regardless if you're up 20 or, or if you're in a two point game with a minute left. You got to try to cut down on those because these are the, these are the games that that'll build up for when you're at Maui and when you're in the conference place, you want to try to play perfect as you can. There's a look of consternation on the face of Eric Musselman right now. I mean, big lead, arms crossed, agitated. They gave up that offensive rebound. Everything matters. Remember, there used to be a book a long time ago that said, don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. There is nothing that's small stuff for him. Everything is important, every detail, every sequence, every play. Yeah, I mean, that's where you make your money. You make it in the details, and, and, and it's an accumulation of all those things that, that come together in March, and that's how you see those Elite Eight runs and, and you know, hopefully a, a Final Four and a national championship is really focusing in on those things to try to play as perfect as you can. Um, and then you'll see yourself in the win column a lot more than in the, in the loss column. Oh, Debo posting up. He'll go back to the free throw line. Charlie Easley picked up the foul. The Nebraska transfer. Thirtieth double-figure scoring game in Devontae Davis's career. Beginning to flip that odometer over to a different number. Thirteen tonight for Devo. Jordan Walsh is back on the bench. That's a good sign, but we saw him helped into the locker room earlier. I don't think we'll see him on the court, but yeah. hopefully nothing is wrong with Jordan Walsh. Nice drive by Tesla, Hull, Iowa kid. A lot of Iowans on this team. Devo's fielding it. <laughs> well, short. Off the, off the, the dribble.
That's the second foul on Brazil. There's Jordan Walsh. Maybe yeah, must well let him. us know uh, what happened. Yeah, yeah no. good to see him back on the bench, like you said. But yeah, I mean, had to had to come out of the game. We'll see how. Well, he's pretty slow to get yeah, up. Yeah, he's slow to get up. Definitely hope it's not something that's that will linger. Arkansas has allowed their opponents on average through two games to score 53 points a game. That's second best in the SEC. They might just keep this team well below 53. Yeah, I mean, this is just a, a, a great defensive performance by Arkansas. And, and obviously South Dakota State has played two games. But, I mean, this, this half-court defense of Arkansas is stifling. They scout you well. So athletic. Well, Kyle, this young man, third. I mean, they thought I mean, they might have to redshirt him, yeah, Manny. And just, I can't finish my thought because he's <laughs> – had 14 in his rim. college debut. He has six tonight, but he's going to have an impact on this Jackrabbits team. Yeah, you know, he's going to be one of those guys that that you're going to need to keep recruiting because well, that's going to get part, some right? film of, of, of him, and a lot of schools might be calling. That's a tough part about mid-majors. They yep. lost Baylor Shireman to Creighton. Meanwhile, under four, media timeout, Arkansas comfortably ahead, 22-point advantage. It's an interesting phrase from Jordan Walsh. It's a wake-up call. Looks like he's feeling better. But uh, what were the first few games, even the first year of your college career like? Same thing, wake-up call? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a definite wake-up call. I used to say that I think, and obviously I didn't make it to the NBA, but I think the transition from college to NBA is smoother than high school to college. Like, it is like a whirlwind of difference. You know, in, in high school, I could go eat the foot-long chili dog with onions right before the game and then still go score 25. In college, you do that. You might not even play, first of all, when, when you're a freshman. And then you do that and you come out here and embarrass yourself. So it, it's a, it is a huge jump. Um, but then just kind of, you know, day after day you work on it and then one day you wake up and you're like, okay, I got this. Kyle tries to get the free throw and does. Even Walsh tonight, he played only 16 minutes before he left with some type of injury, but got a double-figure scoring performance, and I think he epitomizes the length, versatility. Speaking of length, Kyle trying to add another free throw, and he has eight in the game. This will not be the most artistic team when it comes to shooting the basketball or knocking down threes, even though they have shot it extremely well from both distance and the field this evening. But again, this is where you need to turn Defense into offense, turnovers into points, put back opportunities. And this team has played extremely hard, I think, Manny, through two, now three games. Yeah, I mean, they, they've they played hard, and, and, and the one thing that Coach Musselman does is is there, there's no let up. You know, with three minutes left, you got people diving on the floor. He, he, he's going to hold you accountable until that clock says zero. Well, speaking of playing hard, a couple of bodies going into the seats. Someone lost a beverage. Ball was slippery for about a 30-second sequence. <laughs> Nobody could hold on to it. Moore's long on the three. And the whistle, I think this has to be on Kamani Johnson with the expression that came off his face. Broden Lean, Minnesota native. Played just five minutes before tonight, and Brazil will get the double-double. <laughs> There's the 10th rebound. We're waiting for it. Stat stuff. Got to tell you, he, he definitely knew he had nine rebounds. You think too. so? Yeah. You always know. You always know. Someone in charge of telling you? Uh, <laughs> Yes. Is that a GA's job? It's, Come on, say one rebound, man. Yeah, Come yeah, on. Come on, one more. Yeah, you, that's the GA's job, but you also can know, like, and you can tap them and be like, you know, hey. Do you think we can we find at? any GA's over on that bench or managers? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. We're going to have to take out another behind. row of seating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe those, that group of seven in the back. There's more people rebounding shots during warm-ups <laughs> than there are those shooting, as Joseph Pinion gets his first point. He had 15 against Rogers State in that 
exhibition game. Good three-point shooter out of Morrillton, getting some minutes tonight. Gets a couple of free throws. Question is, will South Dakota State get to that number where Arkansas has held two teams on average of 53? And they're going to shoot more free throws. Matt Mims. This was a kid last year that of the 100 field goal attempts he took, 80 of those were three-point shots. Maybe not quite the caliber of shooting this year, but then again, they were the best three-point shooting team in the country, so any drop-off would take you down. Yeah, I mean, you, you miss one <laughs> shot, and you, you're no longer on par with last year. Kamani Johnson going to work. Boy, who tipped that one up and in? There was multiple <laughs> hands on that basketball. I think they're going to give it to Kamani. Nine different Razorbacks have now scored in the game. I mean, that's what you got to like from this team, is, too, is you've got a, you've got a deep team. You get Nick Smith Jr. back, and you've got guys who can all give you that, that 10 to, to 12 points, and then you insert a guy like that who, who could be a 20-point average, and you've got a scary team that, that has a lot of depth. That's why I think it makes trying to predict or determine what these rotations will look like almost impossible. Yeah, I don't it, It'll change based on who's hot, who's it, playing well. It, it'll change, and you've got, you've got, you know, nine, ten guys over there that could – play significant minutes and, and, and do really well. And you obviously know how Arkansas runs their shift. They, you know, they're going to play six, seven guys. So, yeah, it could very well be that who has it tonight and that they're going to play the bulk of the minutes. Brazil! My goodness gracious! Whoa. TB2, Trevin oh. Brazil with the hammer! Come on now. That was an angry Come dunk. Come on now. You talk about emphasis. Wait, wait, it, it's, children are watching, man. Children are watching. Save the children. children Look out below. Are, watching. They gotta, are you kidding me? Hey, stop showing that. Stop showing that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we got kids in the building. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Protect the young. Trevin Brazil is a walking yeah. Poster, a walking highlight reel. Hey, Sports Center, don't be afraid to throw that on your top 10, and it better be closer to number one than number 10. <laughs> Kamani Johnson, by the way, got an unsportsmanlike technical foul for some taunting. That's why Mims is on the free throw line. I think the fans oh, are still man. celebrating the dunk. How about Kamani taunting somebody when it wasn't his dunk? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Trevin Brazil, my goodness. If you go into a lab and you say, draw me up a 19-year-old body for an NBA guy, yep. that's what you would come out with a robot. Could that be the dunk of the year three games in? I mean, it might be. It, it definitely – Number one right now. I would say so. That's on the leaderboard. He just kept going up. I was waiting I mean, for him. To you're talking about a guy with a 12-foot vertical and a wingspan of well over seven feet. Yeah, just. I mean, this is sick. Come on now. There's Kamani right there. There's the taunting. <laughs> oh, man. South Dakota State almost got out of here without one from, from Brazil or, or – or even council and just couldn't quite make it out. I said earlier when council drove to the basket, wouldn't you like one time to know what that feels like? Wouldn't you like to be able to go out on the floor and have your head be at the rim level? Yeah, I mean, it, who knows what it feels like. There's the 53rd point for the Jackrabbits. It's exactly what Arkansas has allowed on average now through three games, unless Jack's tack on a few more. I think we're going to see if Darian Ford can get involved in the scorebook 
or Pena. Tremendous three-point shooter. Long on that one. Tipped out. Hit Brazil in the chest. <laughs> It'll be Jack Rabbit's basketball. Also Lawson Blake, the Fayetteville kid in the game. Coach Henderson did say about this Arkansas team, they play with tenacity and passion. I think those are great words. We've seen that at times tonight, just that tenacity that doesn't stop. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they're always going, and they don't stop until the clock hits zero. Abragas missed the three. Final few seconds ticking away here at Bud Walton Arena. Hogs about to go to 3-0 before the hit of the Islands on Friday. Lean can't hit Ford. The rebound, we'll see if Arkansas just runs off the final few seconds. Students got traded to another show tonight. Ricky Council with 19. Can Lawson Blake score? <laughs> High off the glass. Couple of players, both Davis and Brazil with 13. Arkansas also seven three-pointers. There's a knockdown from Lean with one second to go in the game. That was almost a bad beat right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was what one point away from being a what are we, bad okay. beat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, Manny. Close. Razorbacks. Close. Enjoy the victory tonight. And when it's really the final three minutes or so of the first half of the first four minutes of the second half where they got the separation. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they had that big 10-0 run to end the second half, and then you come out the start of the, to end the first half, and you come out of the start of the second half and do an 11-0. That's, that's what Arkansas can do. You know, the ninth ranked team in the country, they've got that firepower, um, and, and they displayed it tonight. Hawks get the victory. Fun performance tonight. We saw some athleticism. The Hawks also knocked down seven three-point baskets, some highlights as well from Brazil and Council. So for Manny Watkins and our entire crew, I'm Brett Dolan thanking you for watching. Once again, our final score tonight from Bud Walton. The Razorbacks take down the Jackrabbits. 71-56, good night from Trevin Brazil. Good night from Bud Walton Arena.